I am Robert Castanello, Assistant Professor of History at the University of Central Florida, and you are listening to the Riches Documentary Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Riches Documentary Podcast. Riches, the regional initiative for collecting the histories, experiences, and stories of Central Florida, is an umbrella program housing interdisciplinary public history projects that bring together different departments at the University of Central Florida with profit and nonprofit sectors of the community in order to promote the collection and preservation of the region's history. By facilitating research that records and presents the stories of communities, businesses, and institutions of Central Florida, Riches seeks to provide the region with a deeper sense of its heritage. This series will feature a podcast every two weeks, in the middle, at the end of each month, that will explore various aspects of Central Florida history. In today's episode, The Winter Park Sinkhole, an Environmental Study, and the Florida Sinkhole Institute, Dr. Frank Kuyawa explains how the Central Florida landscape is littered with the results of sinkhole activity. He also talks about how sinkholes are caused, the Florida Sinkhole Institute was profoundly affected by the Winter Park event, and Dr. Kiawa described its inception and eventual cancellation as a program at the university. The Sinkhole City, USA, once known as Winter Park. Be careful driving through that town, especially after dark. You'll find yourself in the middle of a pit all covered up with dirt. That sinkhole swallowed Winter Park and it didn't even burn. Well, there's roads and houses in that hole. The swimming pool is gone. What's left of getting dried most likely won't be there for long. They come from miles around to see those six new Porsches lying buried in the ground. Oh, the sinkhole city, USA, once known as Winter Park. Be careful driving through that town, especially after dark. You'll find yourself in the middle of a pit all covered up with dirt. That sinkhole swallowed Winter Park and it didn't even burn. Hello. You are listening to A History of the Winter Park Sinkhole. On the evening of May 8, 1981, Miss May Rose Owens reported to emergency services that while walking her dog, a tree in her yard had suddenly disappeared into a hole. What soon followed over the next few days was the development of a crater-like depression that measured over 335 feet across, 110 feet deep, and caused over $4 million worth of damages to businesses and property. Miss Owens would even lose her house to the sinkhole, as the international media outlets reported the story and the site quickly became one of the most visited spots in the area. In this program, we will be talking to Dr. Frank Kuyava about the causes and effects of sinkholes in Central Florida, along with a brief history of the Florida Sinkhole Institute. First, we will start by having our guest introduce himself. Hi, my name is Frank Kuyava. I'm an associate professor of geology at the University of Central Florida. I teach both an introductory geology class to nine majors and a chemistry seminar class to uh, chemistry seniors and graduate students. Uh, I got my degrees first in chemistry and then in geology at Johns Hopkins University back in the 1960s. Many people have a tendency to be unfamiliar with the nature of sinkholes and their impact on the landscape of Central Florida. Many of the lakes that dot the region were originally sinkholes. We asked Dr. Kuyava to elaborate on the other impacts that sinkholes may have had on development in the region. Well, it's kept it from being flat and uh, aggravated our traffic problems even before the city was so large and has directed roads in curved paths and, and because uh, you can't go very far in one direction without running into a lake or other depression from a sinkhole. Yes, not only individual sinkholes, but lakes like Lake Maitland is really uh, formed from the coalescence of about a dozen sinkhole basins. We asked Dr. Kuyava to briefly tell us, what is a sinkhole? A sinkhole is a depression in the surface that occurs when there's a cavity underground 
that can no longer support what's on top. Sometimes there's a sudden collapse of whatever is above it. Sometimes uh, a loose material like sand will f filter through a, a small opening into a bigger cavity, very much like the uh, sand going through the narrows in an hourglass, and then you get a depression at the surface. And that's the, probably the most common type of sinkhole in central Florida. We next asked Dr. Cuyava to explain why are there so many sinkholes in the central Florida area? There's a good deal of limestone fairly close to the surface that's old enough for cavities to have developed and to a fairly large size. And then there's also, a, particularly in the Orlando area, a fairly thick layer of sand that's successful for moving down into these cavities. Dr. Kuyava described the conditions in Winter Park that made it possible for a sinkhole of such magnitude to form. Obviously there was a very large cavity underneath what was to become the Winter Park sinkhole. There's a, a possibility that the, the, the municipal pool was leaking, in fact it was known to be leaking, and the possibility that that may have uh, speeded up the process, although a sinkhole probably would have developed there eventually in any case. We asked Dr. Kuyava to describe the role that the Florida aquifer could play in the development of sinkholes. The role is that as the level of water in the aquifer drops, there's a greater flow of water through cracks in the impermeable layer, the hard pan and clay, and that tends to cause subsurface erosion that can lead to the formation, uh, formation of erosion pipes that can allow the sand to move down into the limestone. At the time of the Winter Park sinkhole, Central Florida had gone through 70 days of drought. Drought conditions became equated with the frequency of sinkhole formations. We asked Dr. Kuyava if it was true that drought conditions indeed caused more sinkholes. It's mostly what we do during a drought. We tend to pump water heavily, and that drops that level in the uh, limestone. And as a result, the water flows more readily from sand to limestone and uh, causes that subsurface erosion. In the early 80s, Florida was a growing state with a booming population. Concerns began to develop that this population was drawing or pumping more water out of the aquifer than could be replenished. By the time of the Winter Park sinkhole, these concerns grew to a fever pitch. The possibility of numerous more sinkholes occurring was coupled with the idea of caverns underground once full of water but now emptied, littering the landscape. We asked Dr. Kuyava if these images of underground caverns were legitimate threats, and if concerns about draining the aquifer at the time were valid. Not really. That's, that's the way that the situation is often portrayed in newspapers and so on. But the, in most cases, it's a, more a matter of just the water running from one level to another, from the sand into the limestone through whatever cracks are available and causing subsurface erosion. The uh, idea of a big cavern being down there that is likely to collapse is true in some places, but not usually here. Here it's more like an hourglass effect than it is like a, uh, a cavern that gets a thin roof and the roof collapses. We're, we're just now beginning to lower the permanent water level in the aquifer. Back then, it seemed like we were keeping, the rain was pretty well keeping up with us. So we, if we dropped the level temporarily, we could trigger sinkholes, but we weren't in that great a danger of actually using up all our water. But now, not only are we using more and more water as this area booms, but also the coastal cities, which is where an awful lot of the population is, is drawing water from the center of the peninsula because that's where the water is. <laughs> and, uh, and therefore, uh, the level is being permanently dropped below what rain can uh, replenish. The Winter Park sinkhole also had a profound effect on the establishment of the Florida Sinkhole Institute. We asked Dr. Kuyava to talk a little bit about the development of the Florida Sinkhole Institute and its eventual demise. Well, there was no sinkhole institute at that point, so that just the idea 
uh, had been proposed a couple of weeks beforehand and uh, promoted the formation of the Institute, which actually came into being in something like 1983 and then went to about 1991. When the Winter Park sinkhole developed, uh, the insurance commissioner at the time, Bill Gunter, took a personal interest in sinkholes. In fact, his interest had been kind of uh, set up by an engineer, Carl Carlander, in the area that had sent him information about a couple of sinkholes that occurred uh, south of here just about a week and a half beforehand and had proposed something like a sinkhole institute to try to uh, accumulate data so that uh, people could get a much better idea of what the risks were that, it, that all engineers and geologists could uh, have access to. And so the purpose of the institute was to uh, be a, a repository for this kind of information. In fact, a database was set up and there was even some consulting services going on for, there was a city on the west coast of Florida that was having sinkhole problems and there was uh, concern among the residents as to whether it was really sinkhole activated or not and some of the insurance companies were uh, concerned too. So uh, the sinkhole institute was able to send uh, geologists out to actually look at the cases in the field and advise them. And unfortunately, it's about the time that the funding was cut during the recession of the early 90s. Since very few students were involved in the institute, the uh, administration decided to cut the funding. It's also kind of significant to note that the, both the president at the time and uh, I believe the insurance commissioner as well had changed and therefore didn't have that personal interest that the previous ones had. You have been listening to A History of the Winter Park Sinkhole. Thank you for listening to this program, and a special thanks to our guest, Dr. Kuyava of the University of Central Florida. For more information on today's subject, please refer to The Winter Park Sinkhole, a report to the City of Winter Park by Jamal Associates Incorporated Consulting Geotechnical Engineers, published in 1982. Special thanks to Dave Serak and WFTV. Thank you for listening to the Riches Documentary Podcast. Feel free to contact us with any questions and comments on the programs that you just heard. Please join us for the next episode, Disney and Smaller Attractions in Central Florida.